Hello Vibe Tribe. I'm making this video in an effort to pay it forward. Uh, to pay back all the other members on this Facebook page who have given me ideas about uh, adding new features to my kayak, uh, making modifications, and hopefully this goes out to new kayakers or anyone that just bought a Vibe or is interested in making an updates to theirs to make theirs a little more enjoyable and more fishable. What you see here is a 2017 Seaghost 130. Uh, the 130s at that time didn't come out with the newer uh, Versa console and hatches and handles. I did purchase those to uh, upgrade my boat. First off, uh, you'll see the newer handles here. Uh, they're a little beefier than the original ones that came out with, and those are really nice when you're having to load the boat by yourself if you've got to carry it very far. It's a little nicer on your hands. Again, the new newer hatches are waterproof. They've got a waterproof bag in them. Uh, I think they look a little better as well. What you're seeing right here are rod tip protectors. They're made out of Kydex. Uh, if you'll recognize that, that name, it's uh, something they make holsters out of. You can heat it up and form it to whatever shape you want. I like to fish in creeks, uh, kind of woolly areas that you're not going to get a regular bass boat into, and you'll want to lay your poles down horizontally to uh, be able to keep them from getting damaged. Stepping back up to the front here a little bit, you'll see I put LED light strips on the front of it. Looks like I'm getting a little bubble right there I need to address. Um, there's actually two of them here. There's a split right here between the two. Uh, the wirings run through the hole and the switches are up front in the console uh, so I can switch those on. If I happen to be out on the water at dusk, I don't have to land a boat and hook up a battery or anything like that. Moving along, you'll see my Lowrance Hook 5 fish finder. I don't have it on at the moment, but you can see the face of it there. There's a few different brands that are compatible with uh, the setup that that vibe has uh, one of the nice things about this model anyway is underneath it has a recessed area and it has a cover over it but it, the the transducer will read through that and you'll see the wiring coming up through here which i didn't rehook it up i'm sorry uh hook that up for for readings and your power also comes in back into the fish finder i've got this uh hobie through hole kit uh, it's basically a little plug, it's waterproof. Uh, it also dresses it up a little bit and the batteries inside the console. The newer Versa hatches have the short section of track so you can add different features on, obviously fish finder. Um, up here I've got a ball for a rod holder. I've got this eye bolt ring here. What I use that for is to be able to clip, clip uh, rod leashes to it. Even when I'm fishing, I like to have it tethered to the boat uh, this puts it up closer to me so that it's not, uh, uh, you know, interfering with my casting. Something else you'll notice is the handles here. The standard ones that the hatch came out with are like a, a clip. And I've noticed that I could get them tighter, but if I'm going down some rough roads to get to my fishing spot, there were a couple of times I found the hatch laying loose, just bouncing around inside the boat. And I knew it was just a matter of time before I lost it on the highway somewhere. So I upgraded to these T-style rubber handles. They're kind of like the handles on a Yeti or the Vibe coolers. Uh, you can get this pretty snug. It really seats it down inside that gasket to make this waterproof. And I don't have to worry anymore about losing it going down the highway. Another feature that I added onto the boat. Tighten that back up. Another feature that I've added onto the boat is this uh, anchor wizard. This here is the crank handle. It's got 50 feet of paracord in it, and it's run back, which we'll go over this more later. It's run back through to the uh, the anchor chute in the back, and we'll go over that when we go back there. Here in the seat area, a couple features. 
Um, and I, I apologize for not looking it up to see who it was I bought them from, but it's one of the members of the, the group here. These are seat risers. Um, for one of the more inexpensive items I've added to the boat, this is probably one of the better features. Uh, it raises the front of the seat a couple inches. Not only does it help with storage underneath, uh, trust me, after you know a good long day of paddling around, fishing, sightseeing, or whatever, it makes a world of difference in how your knees and back feel at the end of the day. Another feature of this boat, you've got storage areas right next to your hip here to put Plano boxes in, so you can carry quite a bit of tackle. Um, but one thing I was finding, and I saw these complaints too on uh, on the page, was uh, you'd have the the Plano boxes would end up sliding up underneath the seat. And trust me, for a fat old guy like me, if I'm out on the water and those slide underneath this seat, I'm not getting them out. I can't reach them. So to help solve that problem, I took this piece of aluminum tubing, flattened the ends of it out, and then mounted it on the boat where the bungee was at, which I left that in there. That keeps those from sliding under the seat. It's a pretty snug fit. And then I added this bungee to make it a little easier to reach from the seated position. You'll see it's got a little stiffness to it, so it's easy to get a hold of. Then you just rehook it here to hold the box in. Um, it's not real tight, but if I roll the boat over, those boxes are gonna stay put. You see here again, red bungee. I changed that from the black, uh, just to add a little splash of color to the boat. And then some of the bungee in the back was starting to lose its stretch, so I went ahead and replaced it all. Back here behind the seat, You'll see the new back hatch. You'll notice the original one, if you have one of the, the 2017 or I think even the 2018. I'm not sure on the year when they switched it over, but those back hatches just have a hinged lid. And then it had a T-handle you had to twist here. And that was made out of a real flimsy plastic. Some guys were complaining that they were breaking the handles. While I didn't have that issue, I went ahead and replaced mine. And uh, kudos to Vibe for... For updating that basically this is just a twist off you see I've got a dry bags inside there and I've also got a dry box to put my keys and wallet in when I'm out on the water that way I've got them got them on me but I don't really need to reach them while I'm fishing also the uh, kayak comes with flush mount rod holders um, I went ahead and updated it and bought these ram tubes uh, it comes with a base that you can Put in there and there's a screw on top of the ball that's underneath this fitting that tightens that down and when it does it opens up inside there and keeps it really tight every few trips i'll take this off and uh, make sure that screw's tight so it doesn't work its way loose i carry three of them uh, this one and the one that's flush mounted on the the mighty mount which you it's got nuts on the back of it you can reach them inside the hole that keep that good and tight i put poles and nose and then on the outside when i carry my fishing net and the nice thing is it sits right down in these slots so it's easy to get a hold of if i'm you know fighting a good sized fish and i can grab it pretty quickly but it's not in my way moving back here to the back of the boat again updated to the red bungee it had little t handles that fit in here where the bungee just basically wrapped around it if you're out on the water and reach back to get your cooler or some tackle or whatever, and you happen to bump that and flip it off there, this is all now loose. And I didn't like that. So I updated it with these, it's like an eye bolt, and it's threaded the same as the base that was originally in there. So I just tightened those down, and I ran the bungee through it. And I can adjust that to whatever I want, and tighten it, and you know, put it over other things. So it works out pretty well for me. I don't carry a ton of gear, but I, I do usually carry you know, cooler back here, so I've got some bottled water, and Gatorade, or whatever I need. Now this is the anchor chute for the Anchor Wizard. And if you're unfamiliar with that, um, as you notice, the, the crank was up to the front, and the cord runs back here, which it's come unattached on me. I forgot to reclip it. Um, what happens is the weight of the anchor is back here, and when you release that, it drops this down, drops the anchor in the water. And it stays in that position until you start cranking it back up, pulls it up in the chute, then it lays it back up here so it's out of the way. You've either got a, you know, one of the grapple style hooks or whatever back here, or um, anchors. Um, and one reason I have it set on here like this, 
is it's got this plate here. What that is is a piece of cutting board that I actually cut at a 45 degree angle so that it matched up with the contours of the boat. These bolts are actually through the track so I don't have to drill any new bolts or any new holes in the kayak. <clears throat> then I added my eye bolt to complete the pattern. Um, another thing I've added here is this mighty mount so I can put my safety flag with the light on top of it back here. Nice thing about that is it's a little bit farther back and it's also on the left side. I'm predominantly right-handed when I'm fishing uh, you know, I may cast backhanded depending on presentation. You want to get around a stump or whatever. But knowing me being right-handed, this gives me a little better chance of not bearing a treble hook in the flag. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it proves my chances of it having less. One disadvantage that I've found with doing this is I've noticed this angle is starting to put a little wear and tear on the cable. Uh, the, the, the paracord is coming through here, so I'm going to probably need to replace that. I may adjust this a little bit, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, another reason for having it out at this angle, if you have that grapple hook style anchor and it's open, and you have it straight off here, it tends to interfere with your rudder cables and your rudder. So that helps resolve that issue. Okay, that's the Sea Ghost 130. Now we'll take a look at the trailer and see what kind of features I put on it and maybe you can adopt some of those for yourself. I'm going to walk back up to the front. This trailer started life as a John Boat flat bottom trailer. A uh, guy just wanted to get rid of it, was sitting out in his pasture, so I picked it up really cheap. The axle was still in really good shape, so was the frame. Uh, just needed some paint and a little more wiring, updates, uh, and some LED lights. You know, I customized it so it fits the boat, but the the uh, the way it's set up, if I change to something else, uh, kayak-wise, I'm pretty confident I could adjust it and make it fit. I went ahead and got a newer winch. Uh, the one that was on here was pretty rusty, and I went ahead and, and actually went probably a size bigger than I needed, but they were the same price, so I thought, you know, why not? <clears throat> got that tied into the front of the boat I don't need to have it real snug and real tight but I put this ring on the handle so that this hook isn't pulling directly on the handle um, I'm still putting the same amount of pressure on but the, the hook isn't going to mar that handle up and again I don't have to have it real tight just something to keep it snug I extended this bow bumper out so I could get everything lined up with the rollers and the you know, brackets that were still on it that way it sets right in there. And you'll notice, got a running light right here. And there's another one right here. A little safety at night, early in the morning. You know, you want some visibility for your trailer because it does extend off the back of the vehicle. A little bit hard, a little bit hard to see, but you'll see it's got two inch PVC for the bunks. Uh, they fit and nest perfectly up in the scupper hole channels. That boat rides really well in those. I mean, you could almost not tie it down. I don't trust my luck, so I make sure I strap it down. But, you know, it is, it is sitting in there really well. Something you'll see here is a six-inch piece of PVC. Uh, it's about seven and a half feet long. That way I could run with seven-foot rods if I want. I use it as a, a rod locker. Uh, Predominantly, I only use it when I'm going to and from fishing. Uh, I don't take more poles than I'm going to use, and I don't, you know, I don't leave it in them overnight or anything like that. So I don't, I don't typically have to worry about somebody stealing them. Uh, they're mainly in there, just like I said, to and from the fishing spot. And it is lockable. It's got a lockable cap on the other end. Here I got a set of what they call boat buckles. They're self-retracting ratchet straps. So I don't have to worry about, oh, I forgot to strap a strap. You know, I got to tie a strap off. All the tag end is dragging down, you know, down the highway behind the trailer. It just retracts inside there. And it, you know, ratchets down just like a rear ratchet strap. And again, you don't have to have it very tight. You don't want to damage the boat. And I mounted that one on the trailer so that it actually goes right through the handle of the boat. Then there's a second one back here just to suck the back down. 
Another feature I added are these guide-ons. Typically, you see those on, you know, larger boat trailers. Um, got to do a little research, and, you know, at times you'll be fishing somewhere. You're done for the day and get ready to land the boat, and the wind's picked up, and it's, it's always a crosswind. Seems like it's blowing your boat. You know, the tail end of it's going one end or one way or the other, and you can't keep it on the trailer because by the time you get it up there and get ready to tie it off to go get in your truck or pull the trailer up, it's already wandered off the trailer. Now, with these guide-ons, it may not stay directly on the PVC, but it will stay on the trailer. I really like that. They've paid for themselves several times. Um, the other added feature with these is uh, these are lighted on top. So with those, the tail lights, and then the running lights down the side, it's pretty well lit up at night. Um, you know, it, it's a nice little safety feature. Anyway, that's my 2017 Sea Ghost 130 Vibe Kayak. Uh, hope this helps some other people, you know, add some features to their boat and enjoy their time on the water more. Um, to be honest, uh, about 90% of what you've seen, like I said, has been borrowed from someone else on this Facebook page. Uh, I want to thank all of them. Can't thank them individually, or this would be a an hour and a half video. Uh, if anybody has any questions. Um, comments, uh, feel free. I'll do my best to answer your questions and, and see if we can get uh, some more time on the water. That's it. Everybody have a good day.